escovitch. Well, this is my take on escovitch fish. I have to eat the common recipe a bit to fit my taste. I love how balanced this sauce is and how well it complements seafood and not just fish. First we have to choose our fish. Sunapa is the most popular fish you'll find in Esco Beach. But to the market a bit too late and I couldn't get any that was fresh enough. So I got some grunt instead and it is nice to be to scale them from it. Scaling fish is a lot of hustle and clean up so I always get it done at the market. Although you should try hustle me, your convenience is worth the money. Since the price of chicken and lobster is almost the same, might as well get some lobster too. I'm back home now. Just going to rinse the fish in a vinegar solution to cut the rawness. You can use lime, lemon or even sour orange. Vinegar is cheap and achieves the same result. Yeah, she did a really good job with cleaning out the insides. The same thing for our lobster. Rinse in vinegar and water solution. Ensure that our fish does not stick to the bottom of the pot when frying. We'll pat it dry with a paper towel and try to get off as much excess liquid as possible. Next up is our jar up. For this I'm using some dried pimento. I'm just going to crush and chop them up to get them as fine as possible. I forgot I had one but a mouth and test would have worked much better here. Pimento won't fly all over the place. Next I'm adding about a tablespoon of celery salt, about two tablespoons of Cajun spice, dried pepper flakes and a pinch of sea salt and a lot of black pepper, about two tablespoons and just mix that up to make it homogenous. So now that our rub is ready, we're going to apply it. We want to season the entire fish. Start with one side and give it a nice coat of season. Then we flip to the other side and season just the same. And finally, season inside the fish, ensure you get the rub everywhere. So you might notice a dark pigment on the lobster that you didn't see at the market. This is caused by an enzyme which turns lobster black when cut and left at room temperature. This isn't harmful at all because the lobster isn't spoiled, but to avoid this I would have to cut the lobster at home instead of at the market. It doesn't look nice but it goes away with cooking. I give the lobster the same treatment as the fish. Pat it down dry as possible, then season with our rub. Oops, um, I ran out of rub so I'll just have to make some more. Dried pepper flakes, some celery salt, Cajun spice and black pepper. Skip the pimentos and salt because the rub is salty already. 
and the lobsters are small so it will penetrate easily. So now we'll just mix that up and apply it generously to our lobster. If you've seen some of my older videos, you know how much I love cast iron pots. I'm putting this on high heat and adding enough oil to submerge our fish halfway. To the oil, I'm adding scallion, thyme, garlic and scotch bonnet pepper. I don't want this to explode so I'm punching it with a pop. Holds really is a trap here so it doesn't pop up and pop. Get our oil nice and hot. The seasons are a nice indicator of how hot the oil is. Push them aside and we'll place in our first fish. Get the seasons out of the way for the next fish. We just lay it in, in the opposite direction to the first fish. This makes flipping and taking it out when it is ready much easier later. Four to five minutes on each side is enough. Fish generally don't take long to cook. A little longer if you want it crispy. Escovies is usually made with crispy fish and some people really like that. I'm flipping after four minutes. The second side of the fish will cook much quicker than the first because even though it's not in the oil, the temperature it experiences. Just above the pan is still high enough to start cooking it. So when it hits the oil, it's already on its way. leave the seasons in, they will start to burn and make everything bitter. So I'm removing them now, as well as any bits and pieces of fish that I can. That's done. So now I'll take them out and place them on a paper towel to remove any excess oil. Okay, the market did a nice job cleaning out the insides, but she left some scales. Not a big deal, but if you're overcharging, well. So anyways, we'll try and remove our last fish that couldn't fit. Had to turn on the heat a bit for this one, so it didn't burn. So now let's do our lobster. I'm placing them in shell side down and I'm reducing the heat a bit. This will make sure they don't overcook and dry up as the shells will offer a little protection while they cook. I'm cooking them most of the way on the shell side. This will take about the same time as the fish, about 4 to 5 minutes. You can see this flesh starting to turn white and firm up on the cut exposed side. That's telling me they are more to cook through and that's exactly when I want to flip them. I'll just turn them over and let it go for about another minute or two before I remove them. That looks really good and it should taste great too. I won't know for sure because I'm allergic to shellfish. I'll just have some on it someone else taste it. So I'm just going to remove them and place them on paper towel to drain off the excess oil just like our fish. Our escovite sauce. This is basically a really spicy pickle with mostly carrot, onions, and a lot of scotch bonnet. But I'll be adding a few extra in ingredients we don't traditionally use. For the sauce, I need one julienne carrot. This adds a bit of sweet. The red onion slice. Green onions are traditional, but the color is nice. Celery leaves. 
This ingredient is not traditional, but it adds some really nice complex flavors to our sauce. Some fresh thyme. So one slice red pepper. Just removing the seeds and the white bits I like during these makes, they look really nice. One slice green pepper. Just the same with the red, remove the seeds and the white bits. One slice red habanero and one slice yellow scotch bonnet pepper. Three cloves of garlic and thinly slice in this. And some sliced scallion. And that's it for prepping. Now let's cook. So to my medium pan and medium high heat, I'm adding, adding about half a cup of oil. This is not traditional, but I'm adding a tablespoon and a half of sugar to caramelize. I really love the flavor this gives. Although it would make your escovitch darker in color. You can skip this and still get good results, especially because it is so tricky to get right. Then we add the sliced scallion, garlic and thyme first and let them brown a bit. A few slices of hot pepper got in, but that's okay. Add the rest of the vegetables, onion, peppers, carrot and celery leaves as well as the hot pepper. Just throw everything in, the order really doesn't matter. Give them a little stir so they can be begin to soften. Then about a dozen dried pimento. This is a must have traditional ingredient. I'll also add about a dozen cloves as well. This will make this will make the sauce really fragrant. I'm adding about two cups and this is what makes the sauce also. Growing up I used to see shopkeeper so let's go with fish for this. If you know guys what prevents the fish from spoiling and give it that nice pickle taste. A large pinch of salt. I realize Escovitch takes way more salt than what seems reasonable without tasting salty, but taste as you go just to be sure. Traditional Escovitch by any means, and I'm pretty sure I'm offending some persons right now. Give that a taste to check the flavors. Ooh, the spice level is right, but it's a bit too tangy for me. So let's add a bit of sugar to balance that out. Traditionally, all the sweet in Escovitch would come from the carrot and onions. Stir that in to dissolve the sugars and give it another taste. Mm, that's really nice. Balance and spicy with bright flavors and the sauce is now done. Let's plate it. That can hold some sauce like this one. You really want the fish to be sitting in the sauce and soaking it up. So layer the vegetables over the fish. These taste really nice and I like to eat them by themselves. Carrot is still crunchy by the way. And finally, pull your girlfriend out of class to yeah, taste this. Enough orange wedge, dry lobster first. Yeah, try whatever you want first. <laughs> Let's begin. Oh. One more sauce, honey. More sauce? Alright, I'm gonna get that picture on the right this one. Find a minute on a lobster fan. Ooh. Now pop out nice. Pop out nicely. Mm-hmm. Big fish. Mm. Mm, that was a juicy. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I put that fuck. <laughs> so, what's the verdict? Well, <laughs> babe, that ghetto, look at me.